from Georgia, I headed north to East Tennessee for a return trip to Land Haven. Five years ago, I made my first trip and filmed an episode for season three of Late Bloomer. It could not have been a more beautiful day in the country. And as I rounded the bend, the heritage barn came into focus. Mary had grown up on this registered century farm and she and her husband, Scott, retired here to care for her mother and the land. The energy efficient house they built looks out upon the pond they built. Land Haven has been historically a tree farm and wood is still sustainably harvested from this hill. This trip, my friend Mary had a plan to demonstrate small batch tomato canning, but her pecan pie is worth the trip alone. I headed over to their house just in time for an early southern supper. We've got quite a feast here. Man, I think you have. All right, Kay, you're over here. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. Mashed potatoes, green beans, squash, tomatoes, all from the garden. <laughs> right? There you go. <laughs> well, this is a gardener, right? <laughs> yeah, there's the gardener, and you got stuff all over your shirt. Next morning, I saw that Mary had stocked up her mother's kitchen. After tea and toast, I headed out the kitchen door to find a field of clover, and the pond beyond was like glass. I'm back at Land Haven with my friend Mary, and we are going to can tomatoes. Small batches, and I'm going to give you a few tips. All right. <laughs> Today, because it's early season here in July uh, for tomatoes, we're going to do a small batch of tomatoes. And I think this is the best way to kind of experiment a little bit with some of our favorite recipes, you know, to make. Today, we're going to try to make a spread, a tomato spread. And so I've assembled some of our things that we're going to do. And I'm going to give you a little tip about doing it in the crock pot because I think that's a real good way to marry up all of our flavors. I've kind of found this out from experimenting with things a little bit. So I'm really excited to show you some of these things today. I just dropped our um, jar lids and the rings into the hot water in order to get them ready for our canning. One of the things to keep in mind is to preheat your crock pot. I've had this one on for about 30 minutes on high. I've already pre-diced our garlic. I've got some red pepper here, a little bit of brown sugar, a couple of bay leaves, and I've got some rosemary basil seasoned sea salt. Um, I don't use very much salt in my canning, but I do like to occasionally kind of play with my flavors a little bit. And we will put the tomatoes through the sieve so we can get rid of the seeds. And we may even go back and, and put some of the peel in back into the sauce to help it thicken up a little more. At the end of the process uh, of getting everything cooked for a little while, it usually takes about 30 minutes in the crock pot, then we will add some lemon juice in order to help the tomatoes hold their color. The tomatoes that I use are the Roma a combination of the Roma tomatoes and also I use cherry tomatoes because we like the flavor of the cherry tomatoes and I think the Romas they're good a good thick tomato but we like to throw in a few cherry tomatoes with it and that helps kind of give it a little bit more flavor and punch. The other thing I like about both the Romas and the cherry tomatoes is you don't have to peel them and I'm all about doing things that are easy We've got all of the tomatoes washed up now, so now we're gonna throw them in the food processor. So we're slicing up just a couple of the bigger tomatoes so that it'll make our job easier in the food processor. And I don't core them. 
I don't peel them. I just put them in here. We're just going to pour this small batch right into our little sieve. And we're really focusing on just keeping the seeds out of our spread. We don't mind having a little bit of skin in there because it will cook away because both the Romas and the cherries cook away really nicely. I think one of the things that I learned early on was I didn't have to make such big batches of things. Since it's only my husband and my mother and I, you know, if even if I found something that I liked, I might not need a whole pint of it. And using things when they first come in. And that way, I think it makes it more efficient to use just what you're going to use for your family or maybe make for gifts. And even if you're gonna make gifts, if you're making tomato paste or olive paste or whatever you might be making, you're only going to need small batches. You're not going to need to be giving people big batches of things. Now we like garlic instead of onions. And the thing to keep in mind is because we're adding some fresh ingredients, it will need to cook a little bit longer than some of your recipes could call for. So now I'm adding some red peppers, some fresh red pepper. And so we've added the garlic, some red pepper, and now we're going to put just a little bit of brown sugar in. And we've put a little bit of brown sugar in. I may add just a little bit more. Does the sugar help to thicken it? Mm -hmm, sure does. Because I love rosemary and basil both are two of my favorites. I've got a little bit of this sea salt with rosemary and basil in it. We're going to add just a little bit of that. Those are dried. And then we're going to add, because this is a small batch, just about a half a bay leaf. Even though I may add a few seeds back, I'm going to put a little bit of the skins back in here. So what we're doing is we're just getting some of the meatier skin and putting a little bit back in here. And it does have some seeds. So if you have problems with seeds, skip this step. But this will help it thicken a little bit more, too. So just a little taste. A little bit more of this. This is the best part because you can season it to your own taste. What's his name? Originally it was Betty, but the vet told us it was Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Hey. <laughs> and you made this incredible house in how many months? Seven. Wow. For your granddaughter? Yes. And this is the side panel that, so you can play. So you can get in there and play. And you even painted that is that an original painting yes it's amazing show me that piano wait let me see that 
Let me see that little violin. That's amazing. I, I don't even know how you did that. Now we're gonna take the jars out. They're hot. We sterilize them in the dishwasher so they're all set for us. We've got everything assembled that we need. Spatula, and now we're ready to bring our tomatoes over. Take our crock pot out. So we're gonna add just a little bit of lemon juice. And because this is a small batch, I'm gonna add just a little bit. The other thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna fish out the bay leaf. One whole one. We've got our lemon juice mixed up in here and that will help it retain the color. We don't want it to boil out the top. We want to leave just to the top of the wide part of the uh, jar. It's called leaving the head space they call it. You want to make sure your jars are hot too. And that way you don't have any chance of cracking or any surprises. I'm just gonna make sure our rims are all nice and clean. Not too tight. One of the main reasons I wear an apron the jars are hot. I want to make sure I don't take the chance dropping them. We've already got our pot boiling water. Now they're submerged. Is that a problem? Nope. That's the way it's supposed to be. You want to have it a little bit over the top. This might be just a tad too much so. No, I don't want below it but I only want about an inch. And now we're gonna put the lid on. And we're gonna process for 35 minutes. Okay, where do you want us to sit? Here and here. Okay. I'm just gonna see what this looks like. Ooh, 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 jeez. Uh-oh. <laughs> I just got stunned. Try not to get it on my cushion. Okay. Oh, they're in the cushion. Yeah, up, oh, and here's one over here, too. That's our small batch. Let's go taste it. Now I'm always going to be leery of pulling out a chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See those are wasps flying out. <laughs> and it'll thicken up some more as it cools, but put more in there. <laughs> Alright. Mmm. 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 A little tart. Mmm. That would be so good on pasta. Mmm. Mmm. All right. That was great. It is a uh, capture of the um, Japanese beetles. Oh. It has a pheromone in it and then a flower smell. They'll collect near this and then they'll drop down in it and can't get back out. Otherwise, they like. Ooh, that's a lot. Bean leaves, grape leaves, broccoli leaves. What do those guys look like? Japanese beetle. Yeah, let's oh. go after them, but it's capturing, you know, some of them. So if you put another one over here, would it help? Actually, if you put it up close, um, it can actually attract more. Oh dear. Those bags would be full in a day, <gasps> completely full. Oh my goodness. So, and, and it, I had seven of them out just in this area. Oh, good And uh, I fed them to the fish. Gorgeous, that tree is beautiful.
How many trees do you have? Of apple trees, we have uh, four. So this is your orchard? Yeah. Dan, down here. Okay. I think it would be better for you to see this. All right. Heating frenzy. Oh wow, there's a lot. They're going, oh, we got lucky. We got lunchtime snack. To get them to reproduce, I put pipes in. They're 12 inch pipes and three to four feet of water. They have room to get in there, the larger catfish, and then they can protect their brood down in there. Now, do you catch them and eat them? Yeah. The nice to get thing about farm raised Right. Can you get good food for fish? Oh, yeah. Mary gave me one for the road, and I turned my wheels towards Alabama.